I think the world to some extent has changed um, when you founded the Vanguard Group in 1974. I think the idea that passively managed funds could never compete with all the MBAs and all the people who are actively managed. In fact, as I understand it, the Vanguard Index was called Bogle's Folly. Um, in 1994, Jason Zweig did a study comparing the actively managed mutual funds with the S&P 500, and the index funds outperformed 97% of the time. In more recent studies, basically almost, every, not almost, every single index compared to the number of active managers, the active managers almost always, or to a large extent, did, did worse than the indexes. So, which obviously has a lot to do with fees. So do you somewhat feel vindicated that, that here you were, everybody was calling it Bogle's Folly, and it looks like history has proven you right? And maybe vindicated is a little strong word, but... Well, a humble fellow like me would never <laughs> say that. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is his history has proved that indexing works. Leave aside whether I'm right or wrong. And it's actually much, much stronger than the numbers that you see because we see the funds uh, underperforming the index, but often there are many, many statistical ways to look at this, infinite numbers, and everybody picks the ones they like. But the fact is you're probably only talking in most of those comparisons. You say who did best over the last 25 years you need funds that have survived for 25 years. So all the failing funds that do badly and go out of business aren't even in the comparison. So that's one reason that the index superiority is underrated. Another reason is that when the fund tells you it's earned, let me say an average return of 10% over the last blank years, uh, average annual return of 10%, uh, its investors almost never earn 10%. They put their money in after the fund has a good record. So the good record is built of all this great performance, and then they put their money in and it goes away. So for, for many, many reasons, uh, what, what you need to understand about indexing is not as much the comparative statistics, which anybody can manipulate any way they want to make funds look better or worse. But what you need to know is the knowledge of the fundamental way the system works. Uh, you know, if the croupier's cost is 2%, to use that example again, and the market is 7, uh, market is 9, then everybody is going to get 7. Not may get 7, will get 7. In other words, the math is there. The index math is undeniable and eternal. I don't know how to make it any clearer. Well, perhaps the, your analogy in the book to the casino where the house is going to get a significant cut, so you can't, so the net to the gamblers. As a group. Is, as, as a group is negative, and the costs and effect added to the, um, some of the other problems that we were talking about before with agency makes it, it pretty rough for, for investors. Why, why would somebody invest with, with everything going against them, or is the answer to go into low cost index investments? Well, the, the, the question, let me take the question first. Why inv in a system that is this much of a mess, financial system and mutual fund system, why invest at all? And the answer to that is, first, you, be you better invest. Invest you must, uh, because if you don't invest anything, I can tell you the exact amount of your retirement fund 25 years from now. It's going to be zero, right? <laughs> Not very complicated, so you have to invest. And the question is how. And the index fund is in many respects, if not all respects, uh, the answer to what to do, because if you want to look at it in terms of croupiers and Las Vegas and all that, in the index fund, you go into the casino, you buy every stock in the casino, or all first largest 500 stocks in the casino, and then get the heck out and never darken its doors <laughs> again. Don't trade, don't do anything. The, the, the rule for the investor should be and all think about, and in effect, the financial system is built on this. And when something monstrous happens, big, noisy, uh, affects the market greatly on a very short-term basis, the answer is don't just stand there, do something. But the real answer is don't do something, just stand there. 
was don't get captivated by the emotions of the moment. So indexing, because of its permanent, in effect, portfolio, managers don't change all the time as they do in the mutual fund industry every five years for a typical fund. Uh, so if you're going to invest for the lifetime, because of its cost, because of its tax efficiency, the index fund, which is not any magic, it's owning all the companies in America and holding them forever. And that is and will be and must be the winning strategy.